Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is the 116 Life on Holy Culture Radio, Sirius Channel 140. I'm your host, Ace Harris, here with the amazing... Lemo Blaze, God's mm-hmm. favorite ride, baby, young and chosen. <laughs> the AKAs is a lot. The AKAs is a lot. And you know who it is? It's your boy Lemo Blaze. Hey, yeah. this is this is my homie, my my African brother. <laughs> yes, sir. My Nigerian brother who believes that Liberian food is the best. Fallacy. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna. So one thing about us Africans, I mean, especially Nigerian, we're going we're gonna to always spar, you know what I'm saying? We're going to make sure. I mean, but we, we at the end of the day, we all know, like, who's got the oh, best, you know, yeah, of everything yeah. in Africa. Uh, you know, I think we, we know, I, we know, we know. We I, just I, we just try to entertain the other conversations to be humble, but we know. I think we're going to end this <laughs> taping early because we, we have we have to duke it out in the back, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> nah, but uh, what's up, man? I mean, I mean, this is like family talk, man. Me and you, yeah. me and you, I think we've g- g- grown pretty close through the yes, years sir. and I mean you've been part of the reach scene Oof, not even just reach you've been on the scene in terms yeah. of like Christian music African music for a minute yeah How you? Yeah. first of all how you feeling today man man uh, my flight yesterday was annoying <laughs> yeah but besides that man it's a blessed day I feel good uh, it's always yeah. I always love being in, in Atlanta yeah and just being around the guys being around you Cray and the rest of the guys so it's it's amazing cause like I'm leaving like several thousand miles away i don't know if it's thousand miles but it's, I'm living, it's far across i'm the- living very far away so every opportunity to like connect and yeah be with the fam i appreciate it I oh for it. sure for sure i mean yeah. i think i think it's like you know um always i think it's probably your third time back here or second probably third, third. yeah, third. yeah. Third, I, was, I think it's the third time yeah third. yeah even yeah. though i feel like i feel like <laughs> even though you live far yeah we've been seeing each other a lot you know and i think it's good for you to keep I think it just speaks to how busy you've been too, though. Yeah. I mean, yeah. talk a little bit about that. How how's it been? Just managing all the latest growth of everything, and we're gonna get into some backstory. But nah. just currently, it's good to just hear people, yeah, hear you, you know, say what you. How's it it's, been? It's it's been crazy, man. It's a blessing, and and like I'm forever grateful for it. But I've been on the road. Ev- I mean, my wife always correct me. I say being on the air because I'm I'm like flying from country to country. Mm-hmm. But I've been on tour for like. For what? For months now. Yeah. Uh, I finished my Europe tour weeks ago. Uh, I did Amsterdam, Belgium, uh, Germany. I haven't actually haven't finished because I'm doing Paris in two weeks. I oh. uh, did the London show. It was crazy. Man, I've been around. Did Dallas, did Houston, just came from Toronto into, into Atlanta. So it's been crazy, man. I've been performing every week for the past, what, four months? Wow. Yeah, it it is exhausting, but it's it's a blessing, and I'm just glad being able to do what I do, man. Hey, Amen. I mean, I think yeah. that's, I think it just speaks to the the uptick in your in your growth in your career. Oh, yeah. you, you, you're kind of on a God's taking you to new heights. Yeah, and I think um, sometimes balancing the business can be a, an adjustment. Oh yeah. Um, but but even though you're on a wave right now, things are going up. I think it's also important for people to get to know. Yeah. Limo Blaze, Samuel Umbu, Umubiku. Nah, ah. don't do that. Don't do that. It's Onwubiko. Onwubiko. Don't, don't bite your tongue, man. I would just, I'm going to let that chill. Yes. Yeah. You, 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 you Nigerians, Imo man. Imo Onwubiko Jr. That's the name. So <laughs> just for the people who are trying to getting up to speed. Yeah. I'm, I'm assuming if you're tuned in, you're familiar with Limo Blaze. You should be. I feel like you've been seeing them all over our channels. Yeah. But for those who are kind of still like getting used and acclimated to it. Tell the people, shout out Biz in the back. Biz! <laughs> so tell the people a little bit about who you are, oh, yeah. where you're from, what you do, and what, you know, everything, yeah. Okay, so, so oh my God, Biz. Shout out, shout out Biz. Biz is a mess. Biz, Biz is a mess, <laughs> and, and we're just gonna... Uh, but yeah, uh, my name is Samuel Imo Omubiko Jr. I am Nigerian, born and lived the majority of my life in Nigeria. Um... I'm just a guy that re- I just I love God, I love people, and I love making music. Um, I studied biochemistry in school. I, d- I have a BSc in biochemistry. I have a master's in business management, a diploma in business management, uh, some project management somewhere around it. But yeah, that's to say that's maybe some of the things about me that people don't know. Right. Uh, I've been going to school for the most part of my <laughs> life. But yeah, I'm, I make music, man. Uh, humbly, I think I make great music that got breeds on. And yeah, yeah, God's favorite baby. So for the people who are obviously hearing you talk about um, your academic background, yeah. what was it like growing up 
in Nigeria that you grew up kind of like in yeah, the yeah. north. Would you say I, I grew up in the north central part north of Nigeria? Central part. Okay, yeah, I grew up in Benue State. That's where I was born, actually. That's how I was born, and it's man, I have so many fun memories growing up because, like, yeah, the where I grew up in was it's like you know how like New York is like the hub of entertainment yeah. in in the U.S. I mean, people would argue that maybe Atlanta. Well, yeah, I mean, New York is still a media hub. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Where I was born and grew up in was very far from that. Just give give me a name of maybe one place in the U.S. that nothing happens, no shot to I, anybody. I, I, I would love to, but I feel like our fans would <laughs> maybe maybe like like Middle Georgia or like yeah. like like South like like North Dakota or something like that. Probably, but like where I was born, no, no shade, y'all. no no shade to anybody. Yeah. But where I was born and and it's like it was so far away from like everything media that was happening in the country. Yeah, it was so bad that if a song became a hit song in Nigeria, it gets to us like three months later. <laughs> That's how bad that Yeah, we're just disconnected from yeah, like the central. Yeah, we're, but, but it was it was a small community, so it was also fun and growing up there. And yeah, man, that's that's. Really was, was it like agricultural? What was? Oh the no, that was the agricultural hub of the country. Oh. It's literally called the food basket of the nation. Wow, what kind of foods did y'all make? Did you grow up on a farm or? No, nah, I didn't grow up on a farm. <laughs> I, I I might have been to a farm like three times with okay. family friends, but no, my parents, my family wasn't into. They were in industrial. They were more. They were industrial. Yeah, my my dad was into transportation. Okay. Yeah, my okay. dad had like like bosses that did interstate travels and all of that. And my mom, my mom used to be a teacher, and then she started running like a uh, a business, like a supermarket type business. Uh, but yeah, it was the agricultural hub of the country, and that's like where food was really cheap down there. Uh, we had cassava, yam, mm. rice. The majority of the foods found in Nigeria, we had it, except maybe for like things like onions that came from further north. Okay. Yeah. But I mean, living in Benue was was fun, man, because like it was also like a really affordable town to live in. Right. It still is. It's still one of the, it is one of the most affordable place to live in in the country. It sounds like a super like peaceful. It was peaceful for a long time, and then. Yeah, the conflict started to happen in the villages. Uh, Say more. What what kind of conflict was happening? And how old were you during this time? Uh, I I think this conflict really started to... Now, this conflict had, had always been there, but they were not consistent at the time that I was, like, little. Maybe it was when I started get, getting to, like, maybe 18, 19 years mm. old. This conflict started to happen, mm -hmm. and then it was... It was always stuck to a certain tribe, which I don't want to mention because sure. I don't want it to get like, sure. political. Yeah. But it was always this, it was it was so consistent. It still happens. You mm -hmm. just wake up and you hear that uh, 80 people were killed in this village wow. overnight. Like it, it happened so much that we That's became crazy. very desensitized to like killings and all of that stuff. But it was how, but we lived in like the, the what's it called? The, the main city. Uh, I, I was born in Makodi, which is the main city, city of Benue. Benue. Okay. So these things barely made it to the city. Okay. But it was always happening around the villages. Right. It's, it's still happening and it's, it it pains me yeah. so much. But I think sometimes in the world I live in, yeah. um, in the West, in America, we, 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 we sometimes have a, especially Christians, yeah. we sometimes have a short-sighted view yeah. of what conflict looks like in other countries. It's bloody, man. Yeah. It's, uh, it's bloody. The closest thing to probably what you, what, what you can relate to it, I mean, per, maybe what's happening in the Middle East, mm. there's just isn't, you know what's crazy? It's like there's mm. so many so many things that happens in Africa that isn't treated with the, with the level of, seriousness mm -hmm. that it is being treated with when it happens like somewhere else in the world for sure for example growing up right in i'm from the eastern part of nigeria right there's a war called the biafra war and three million of my people were killed at the biafra war yeah they three million of my people that that is yeah. not that is not resonating yeah, I in, think, in mainstream media and but, I, it's I think there's something to what you're saying about yeah. and I, I I was made aware of the Biafra only, yeah. partly because I'm African yeah. but I wasn't like it wasn't like taught we weren't 
taught those things. And there's always, every time I hear people yeah. like you say those stories about growing up in like Nigeria, other parts of the world, I think about that tagline from um, Kanye when he was like, pray for Paris. Like he was kind of saying it sarcastically in yeah. one of his songs, yeah. kind of alluding to the fact that when something happens in certain places, everybody pray for Paris, hashtag pray for Paris. Yeah. Meanwhile, you're growing up in Ben, ben how you say ben Yeah, in Ben States. Ben U.S. Ben, ben State. Yeah. And, uh, but yeah, that, that's... And conflict, killings, yeah, and nobody cares, it seems. You know, like. uh, three million people yeah. killed, and it's not reverberating in the media spaces at all. Because this would be something that, if you hear it, everybody should be totally appalled about right. that. But and what, 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 was, what was your faith like growing up? What, and your family's faith? Like, yeah. how did you guys... Uh, you know, um, lean on your faith in those moments of conflict. And where did y'all's faith come from? How did faith inform how you dealt? Like growing up seemingly peacefully until yeah. things started to get worse. What did it look like being a Christian in, in, in that space? I mean, so uh, with with the war thing that I mentioned, I wasn't born then. Okay. But like, but the, I'm talking about the conflict. Yeah, thing, yeah. but with the, with the conflict and all, when, if you were born in Africa, most places in Africa and we have a different perspective of faith, respectfully, I'll say it, sure. than, than our here in the West. And our perspective of faith has always been total dependence on God. So it's like, because you've seen, you've seen the most of life. Like, mm. we've lived in situations where you had to pray for electricity. Mm. It's that deep. Where you had to pray for electricity. Like, it's crazy. I know it may sound funny. No, I, I'm saying it. But I know I have so many stories growing up and I'm like, where I'm praying, I'm like, God, please let them bring the power by this time so I can iron my uniform or I can iron this. That's, the, that's how crazy hmm. that was. Hmm. So it almost feels like it conditions you, which is, now there's like two ways to look at it, right? Hmm. But, we definitely grew up in a place where you had to depend on God because, like, you cannot do life without God. Mm. When, when you, are, you were going through, like, seeing all of this and going through all of this life experiences, you just have to have total dependence on God because that's the only way you make it up. Mm. So regardless of everything that was happening, yeah, we were always mm. thoughts and we had no options, basically. And did, did your parents model that faith for you, you feel yeah, like? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you, 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 you kind of had an example of yeah. what it looked like to walk that out. Oh, definitely. Definitely. But it's, it's just like mostly being in situations where you know that. I don't know how to explain it. Because mm -hmm. like I'm trying to be careful. Yeah. The way that I'm saying it so it doesn't look like I'm also like doing the normal thing like people do and give a bad image of Africa and I see what you mean you know, I, I, that's, that's, I'm trying that, to be careful about I understand that, yeah but I'm also trying to be realistic but if you've lived in conditions where you know that the worst can happen and nobody would take responsibility for it or nobody will be brought to book you just learn over time that the only person you can really depend on is God <laughs> I think that's I mean I, I want to just pause it right there I mean that's just <laughs> You saying the word total dependency is like, total it dependency. sounds like a, something that you say, but for people to actually live, like for that to be their reality, that's a whole different mind shift Yeah, and mindset. I think that- Because it's, yeah. so it's so comfortable out here, right? Because like, it took me a while getting used to it, but it's so comfortable out here where it's like majority of I mean, I know there's also like the hardships of what people sure. go through out here in the West. Sure. But majority of people are probably used to things being handed over to them. And I think, I think, I think your conditions, your yeah. upbringing, your background, yeah. your geography, your culture, your heritage, all these things from what I see have yeah. shaped oh, yeah. the way and the man that you are. Yeah. Because I think when I see you, I see hard worker. Man Definitely. of faith, man of conviction, man of principle, uh, relentless. And so I think those are qualities that I think that God would endorse. Yeah. But I wonder, it's good to hear you say, or it's good for the people to hear yeah. where you came from. Because we, we can get into the music, you know, yeah. which is amazing. Yeah. yeah. But it's good to see and hear from you what is the conditions, what is the environment, what is the culture that you yeah. came from yeah. that inspires this faith that you hear in this music that we yeah. all love. And, yeah, was, yeah. and just to put it out there, like, 
whatever I'm saying about my experiences growing up, uh, I, I need to be intentional about letting people understand that Africa is such a great continent. The potential in Africa is mm. crazy. Mm. It's on, it's the potential is crazy. But I feel like without this getting political, we've, we've, we've been repeatedly put in positions where we are not allowed to maximize our potential. Yeah. I have a theory. I think there are people somewhere who are scared that if we have full access to all the tools that God has made available to us, we'll be out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I feel it, man. Well, let's 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 uh pick it up back up on the next thing, man. Yeah. I, I want to get into like what made you to what caused you to leave your music journey to yeah. from from, Lund, from Lagos from from the north to Lagos to now. So I didn't leave, by the way, but we'll talk uh, about. Okay. It. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, welcome back. This is the One One Six Life on Holy Culture Radio. I'm your host Ace Harris here with God's favorite baby, a Slim Mo Blaze. I feel like every time I say that, I'm like, how you get to be God's favorite? Like, come on, I man. Mean, he's, got, he's got many I mean, children, man. What's it's, up? It's, 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 there's, there's a depth to that statement, and I've tried so many years to make people understand, and a good number of my fans get it. But it's like, it's this thing where God's love is so amazing that if you really deep it, it feels so intentional that sometimes it could feel like, Yo, like, am I the only one that you've got? Why, why are you this amazing to me? So it's not me. It's for everybody to come to the realization of this is how amazing and intentional God's love is. So once you catch the knowledge of that, you're going to be like, oh, I'm God's favorite baby. So we are all God's favorite babies, but you have to realize it. You have to come to the realization of it. I, 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 will, I will grow in that area. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I still rock your t-shirt at the crib. So, um, so we, we, you, you mentioned on the last segment, you said, quote, I didn't leave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I know you transitioned from the north yeah. to Lagos. I'm just an international man now. I, I see. Like, what, 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 <laughs> I mean, you know, all you, all you need is a, um, you know, is a private jet, man. You, and you uh, in there. Amen. He said, amen. oh, he said, amen. amen. Like, it's coming. <laughs> I don't know. We got, we got to pray about that one. I don't know. <laughs> But um, on a serious note, like yeah. you left the north side, you went to Lagos. Tell me why you went to Lagos. Was it for music? And then oh, it was definitely for okay. music. Okay, and, and tell me what made you. Why yeah. was it important for you to to, to migrate to Lagos to so, pursue your music career? And how do your parents feel about that? Oh yeah, so me moving from the north to Lagos is grow, growing up right. When you grow up in Nigeria and you have any interest in music, the conversation has always been: if you want to succeed in music, you have to go to Lagos. So it was we were we were already mentally conditioned that because that was where the industry was, and in hindsight, it was a good move for me because that's where the majority of what happens in entertainment in Nigeria happens right. is in Lagos. So immediately, I was done with uni. I was like. I had saved some money up. I was like, you know what? I'm going to Lagos. My parents were not having it. My mom, especially. My mom said, no, you're not going anywhere. Because, like, you just finished school. Why don't you want to be here at home where you don't have to pay rent? Because, like, I had to go to Lagos and, and squat in somebody's apartment. I was sleeping on the floor for, like, six months. Because mm. I, didn't, I didn't have a place to stay. Mm. I had someone who was kind enough to let me stay in their studio. So I was sleeping in the studio. And, but like, I just had this passion and a dream for my music. And I knew, I knew if, I, if I moved to Lagos, it was going to take it to the next step for me. Gotcha. Because all the while, while I was in Bainway, I was one person who was always trying to connect to the world out there. And Mm -hmm. I had made a few connections in Lagos. So before moving to Lagos, there were people in like the music space who knew my name. They couldn't put a face to the name, but my right. name was already like rever uh, reverberating in certain rooms. Right. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to make this move. So I, I got up. I had just like 80,000 naira saved, which isn't a lot of money. Break it down for the people. What does that mean in terms of dollars? Uh, Maybe like a guesstimation. Like. At, at that time, at that time, the exchange rate was still, was still slightly higher higher okay so at that time eighty thousand would have been somewhere around two hundred dollars oh now it's like less than a hundred dollars oh okay so yeah, you, had, I, you had two hundred dollars to your name that's that was all i had and i moved and i went to lagos and i just kept going man i was like yo this is gonna work out this is i had tough days man i had days i had days when i didn't know where the next meal was gonna come from but and then i'm not from like my parents are not poor 
they're not rich which we're just like an okay family so i could have called home and like yo i need money. but i needed to prove a point to my parents because they didn't want me to go really but i needed to prove a point that i out this music i want to do why it. was that important to you it was it was important for me because for them to fully grant me the autonomy to just go with the music, I had to prove to them that it was going to work out. Because I've always been a grade A student in school. Oh, okay. So it didn't make sense why you were not going to be a medical doctor. Right. To my parents. Right. So I had I had to prove to them that, yo, this music is something that is I've been called to do and gotcha. this is what I want to do in my life. So I needed to prove a point. So I was not calling home, asking for anything. And I remember doing job interviews. <laughs> And because at one point it got really tough, man. I couldn't, like, I was running empty, but I needed to feed. So I was like, okay, you know what? I'm going to get a job. And while I'm doing the job, I'll still be making music to make it make sense. And then I remember going for this interview. I passed the first and second interview. And then at the third final interview, mm -hmm. the manager of the company was like, I went through your Instagram. At this time, I was posting videos of me rapping. Uh, and those videos were doing really rap, well. Rap, rap, like gospel rap. Yeah, 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 okay. yeah. And he was like, I went through your Instagram. I think you were too talented for me to tie you down in this office. And he's like, uh, he would be doing me a great injustice if he gives me this job. That He knows that I think I won the job, but that this job is going to hinder me from where he thinks I can go. Yo, shout, out, that, shout out, shout out to that guy, man. Yeah. I took that to the chest and I went home and I was like, I'm going to give this music everything that I've got for the next six months. And you, and you did that. So what, what yeah. made you, you were rapping. Yeah. At what point, you're in, you're in Lagos, you figured yeah. it out, you're trying to yeah. work. When did you start doing like Afro beats? Yeah. Melodic? Why did you transition? So, and, and when did that happen? So Afro beats has always been a part of like me growing up. That's been a part of me, but... Because I fell so deeply into rap and we had this running joke growing up where it's like, if you sing, you're selling out on hip hop. <laughs> so I could sing when I started music, like my first me falling in love with music was as a vocalist, like I could sing, sing. But then I got into rap and oh. I was, I was, I, I would say I was great at rapping and I was, I had mentally, I thought I had like street credibility, like I had to keep it real. <laughs> Like, I can't be out here singing no hooks, man. That's not gangster enough. But I remember trying uh, one of my friends, Naomi, shout out Naomi, uh, wherever you are. Mm -hmm. She was like, because I always used to feature her on songs to come sing my hooks. So there was this day she came to the studio. We we're supposed to do a song together. She said, Lima, I'm not singing this hook. You're going to sing it yourself. Mm. She was like, you can't sing. Because she, she's heard me sing and she's like, you can't sing. Why are you always bringing me here to sing choruses for you when you can sing? And then she forced me to sing the chorus for the song. And I came out really well. And then I did, I think I remember doing that like two, three times. And then I started to see the reaction mm. that I was getting with the people. Because at the end of the day, as an artist and as mm. a man of God, my thing is I want to have influence. And regardless of whatever I think is like, what is going to get me the most influence with the people so I can bring to them the word of God? Because mm. the music is like, the music pulls people in. That's good, the music, bro. The yeah. music avails the platform for me to be influential to people. So when I started making Afrobeat music, the reaction, the interaction with the music, with the people was different. It was because the rap was always like, oh yeah, he can rap. He's cold. But then... Y'all yeah, don't really stream in this music because I don't see the streams going up. <laughs> What's happening? What's no, happening? My boy said rap was a stream, and so I started singing on y'all. <laughs> no, I, but I could tell I could tell they were not really listening sure. to the music. Maybe they just go listen to it one time right. and they'll walk away. But then with Afrobeat, I found that it was different. It was different. People had that on their playlist. Do, People you, were, do you feel like the melody, the function of melody oh, yeah, 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 allowed yeah, yeah. The, the message to go? Yes. And go and go not just within my community, but also go international. What I have a theory that I discovered early. You can challenge me on this, and that's fine. But we rap music. I feel like people need to understand what you are saying to really soak it in. So there's a you, it's, there's, there's going to be a lot of comment section on that. There, but go keep going. Is, say more. There say is more. a limitation that comes with that because, like, when you go to places, if you're rapping in English and people don't understand what you're saying 
I mean, there's cases where the music is just such a bop, the production is crazy, and then people can just vibe to it. But what I found with like Afro beats with singing and as I found to me, I, I found that early is like people who had no idea what I was saying hmm. couldn't deny the melody because mm. the melody just hits you and people people sing along to the melody yeah. even without knowing what the, it means. The words, yeah, yeah. That's, that thing is very, so you, so you started to see the, the, the response. Yeah, the response. And that led you to just double, I mean, that, when did Afro Beats and, and Jesus, when, when did you like? 2018. Okay, so, so that was right before that moment? That, no, before then, I had been dabbling it, uh, in it, like beats, still one here, one here, one here. But in 2018, I was like, you know what? I'm going to intentionally zero in into this. Okay. Leave rap. Rap can chill. I, was, I got to a point where, I'm, where I was like, yeah, I had to go beyond just making, because I feel like every artist has that season and so many people leave long in that season where you're making music to prove a point. I feel mm. like many people leave in that season. Mm. I don't. Mm. I don't. I had a season where I was making music to prove that I was good, that I was like skillful. Mm. I transitioned from that season into how do I serve the people? Yo, that's, 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 that's golden right there. So immediately I got into that season golden, of yeah. how do I serve the people? That made me to be able to separate my identity from the music. My, the music is not my identity. My identity is, and will always be, that I am a child of God. The music is the tool that God is using. So when I think the music, I'm mm. like, how do I serve the people? That begins to inform how I move the songs that I'm writing. Because at the end of the day, the music is for the people. That's so good, bro. I mean, it's, so you... you Obviously, I mean, things start taking off. I know me yeah. and you connected on DM, some of playlists, reaches. People are kind of tapping in the truth. I mean, you're, you're starting to have a moment. Yeah. Um, and then obviously, you know, we can speed through the rest. There's so much I want to unpack on the next yeah. episode. But, you know, you, you start going crazy. I mean, some of playlists, you get signed, gyro, all that. Yeah. You decided to not move to London, but yeah. travel to London and kind of go yeah. back and forth between UK yeah. and Nigeria. What, what influenced that move and how did that like, what was, what was the idea behind that? Yeah, at uh, first, God was telling me it's time to go. Right. God had, like, green lit that, that it was time for me to go. So it's also, like, understanding there were certain limitations with me. So right now, I live in London and Lagos. So I'm, like, staying in both places. Like, for the, for the next two months after I leave here, I'm going to be in, in Lagos for like two months. So I'm, I'm simultaneously living in both places. But there was a lot of limitations with me living in just Lagos. One was a difficulty to travel. Right. If I was living in Lagos, it would have been really difficult for me to be on tour right now. Gotcha. There is, there is a, a difficulty to travel. There is a difficulty to get visas. Gotcha. Come out of come out of Nigeria. Yeah, to to come out of Nigeria, it, it is difficult. But when me with me leaving in London, it was so strategic for me because I I could foresee an expansion into Europe happening mm -hmm. and into into the US. So the yeah. US is seven hours away from London. Hmm. France is one hour away from London. Germany is one hour away from London. Uh, Amsterdam is one hour away from London. Everywhere in Europe is one hour away from London. Lagos is six hours away from London. Hmm. So it's like London is like a central point. Yeah. I can get to anywhere that I need to get to. If I was going to come to to the US from Nigeria, that would be a 14-hour trip. 14, Why? Yeah. That seems, that seems long. Yeah, yeah. It's a 14-hour trip. Oh, I didn't know it was that long. Yeah, it's long. long. That's so, super long. It's just UK is like a central hub. You, it's like a central hub. Okay. I mean, there might be direct flights from Nigeria, I haven't seen any. Yeah. I've, I've had a trip from Washington to Lagos that was like 11 hours. Wow. I haven't seen a trip directly from Lagos to, there might be, I mean, I think, it's I, think possible. Are, I think there are some direct flights, but yeah. from the north to Lagos to London, from Sunday in Lagos to Sunday yeah. in London, you've, you've kind of carved out a nice route, a nice, and I think as you're growing in your, in your, in your career, you're like, um, you're, you're, you're almost, you're creating like a tour of fans. You're creating, yeah. galvanizing new fans and yeah. new momentum. And I would love to like, on the next segment, man, just tap into like, 
Sure. Specifically, you know, the things you got going on right now, the run you've yeah. been on, and how God's just using you to just to take Afro gospel to the to the globe, man. You yes, know? Sir. yes, sir. Let's get it. This is the 116 Life Holy Culture Radio, Sirius Channel 140. I'm your host, Ace Harris, with Lemma Blaze. We'll be right back, y'all. Stay tuned. Welcome, welcome back. I'm your host, Ace Harris, here with Lemma Blaze. Lemo Blaze. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, man, um, let's talk about this year, 2023. Yeah. Um, you've been on a tear. <laughs> you've been on a tear. I mean, you've yeah. you've crossed one million one million monthly Spotify listeners. Yeah. You've sold out tours. You've been a uh an ambassador for Christ yeah. in in culture. This how did did you know this year was gonna like what was your intention this year? And tell me, let's talk. We're gonna break it down song by song. I think people would yeah. love to hear that. Like to be honest, like I walked into this year knowing like. It was gonna go up because <laughs> I had, I I feel like one I prayed for it, I prayed for it, and I know God answers prayers. I prayed for it, and two, it it feels like I'm in a season where I've had so many years of hard work, and now I'm where everything is just beginning to pop mm. open. It's like doors mm. are opening, and man, it's been crazy from like the music releases to everything we've done and to like touring. Touring has been like the highlight of it. And man, it's been amazing. Mm. I've, I've. Yeah. So like you started off the year. Um, I want to say the, we started off with two. The the, oh, yeah. the 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 two pack, which is like, it's like a little, little, yeah. little appetizer. Well, like, yeah, let's talk, just, talk let's just, a, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, when, when we started the year, we started the year with the Tupac 2 and somebody. And basically those two songs we were like, let's get this out of the way before we start <laughs> our run for the year. <laughs> so those songs were like, oh, like 2 was a very experimental song for me. I just wanted to experiment and see how that would come out. Right. And oh, so many people love that song, by the way. Uh, and then we put that out. Uh, and then the f what was the first put release? It on God. Put it on God. Tell me, talk about how that song came together. Like, so yeah. put it on God. I remember the way that song came about is like I and T Babs, who's my producer, we we were we were, we were on FaceTime that morning. It was a morning, we were on FaceTime, and then we we've been working on my album, and then we were like, Man, I need a different sound. I need something that feels like it's it's like still in the vicinity of what we've done with like gold and desire, uh, but it feels fresh and different. And so he was like, oh, I have this I have this new instrumental that I made. Let me play for you. So he he played the instrumental. And the first thing I said was, the Oluwa is involved. I was like, Oluwa is involved. And then we just started playing with that, playing with that. But by the time we were done writing the hook, like we knew for sure that this was going to be a smash. Yeah. And I remember playing it for you and you said the same thing. It was like, ah, nah, this is going to go. This This works. And... Initially, that song was meant to be just myself because hmm. I wanted to have, when we were working on the album, I was like, okay, let's have a number of the songs where it's just me because like, I love collaborating yeah, yeah. Like, with people, but I was like, yeah, let's, let's have this moment where it's just me. So it was meant to be just me. And then I remember having a, a session with Anatoria for a different song and we, we were in that session and it felt like we were not going anywhere. Right, because like we, she was vibing. We were recording stuff, but it wasn't it wasn't smacking yet. We we're not feeling like. So I felt like maybe we had gotten into a point where there was a little block, there was a mental block or something. So I said, you know what? Let me play you some music that I'm working on, yeah, and see if that's gonna inspire you for us to come back to that song. Oh, got it. And then so, but as soon as I played it, she just went crazy. The verse in her verse in the song, 50% of it was off the first freestyle that she Oof. did after hearing it. She killed it, man. When when I heard that, I was like, yeah. I think it's dope because like that song embodies like the sonics of authentic Afro oh, yeah. music. Yeah. But the unashamed, I love in, in the clear yeah. um worship for oh, yeah. And, yeah. and the message like Yeah, dependence on, on God. Tell, uh, back to your, your your comment earlier, which yeah. is tying it back to yeah. even the whole ethos of what we're about of like being yeah. unashamed, the one one six life. Like when you say that you're not put you're not saying that out of like just it being a cool saying. Oh no. You like, really you really like talk yeah. about the meaning, the heart behind what that means to and you. And 
for me, that is like uh, one message that I've been repeatedly passing lately. Actually, in a number of the songs that I put out this year, that message has been consistent. And I've been trying to teach people that, look, God did not promise you a problem-free life. That's not what he promised. What he promised that when the storm comes, I will be your peace in the middle of the storm. Mm. And I'm always trying to remind believers and whoever cares to listen. Because like sometimes people sell this gospel where they tell you, oh, life is going to be perfect. Uh -huh. That's not the truth of the gospel. It's, it's nowhere. It's not written anywhere in the Bible. And I'm like constantly trying to re remind people because like I have lived it. I still leave it. I still leave situations where things feel crazy and it feels like it's out of my control. For sure. But the only thing I can always trust to fall back on is just to lay it all at his feet, like put it all on God. That's so good, that's man. The only, that's the only way that I can find peace. Because like, like KB said, I don't know what tomorrow holds, but I know who holds tomorrow. I love that. So my confidence is yeah. going to be in the fact that I can put all my cares, I can cast all my cares on a God that I know is loving. Mm. And sometimes things don't turn out for sure how we expect them to. But even in the, the seasons where we experience pain, I've learned over time that there is no pain that we experience that is useless. That's good, bro. So me consistent, consistently trusting to lay it all on God is me knowing that even if I go through pain, God has a use for my pain. That's so good, bro. Put it up. Like put it up. Uh, sometimes, put it in on sometimes in culture we use that phrase yeah. loosely. Yeah. But I think you've kind of helped. That song helps... Um, substantiate or qualify yeah. the, the meaning behind it. So, what was the next one? What was the next record that, that came out, man? First of all, that's, it was, uh, I think it, was, it wasn't Pretty Day, was it? Was, was I think it was Pretty Day. Let I think, me, so, it, it was after after Put It On God, I know, I know you did the Gold, I think did the Gold Remix packs earlier. Oh, yeah, we did those packs. Um, I think it was Pretty Day. I think it was, I think it was Pretty Day as well. Like, Pretty Day with Madison Ryan Ward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk yeah. about, talk about um, that record and how that came about. Like, Cause I mean I, I see that I see yeah it was pretty day everybody using that song yeah on their socials yeah. even people who are not even seemingly Christian fans yeah. like what what was the thought um, thought process behind that record so pretty day first of all I wrote yeah. that I wrote that song like two years ago hmm. I had it like wrote it like two years ago uh, T Bob's had sent me a track and I was like so my thought process behind it I started that song off a conversation I had with you. Cause like we had a conversation, our regular A and our conversations, and you were like, "Oh, okay, so we need to make we need to to make something that appeals to a global scene." Mm. Cause like a huge part of like my Afro beats for some people might be like it's very cultural, like down deep in like this is core Afro beats. So you and I were having conversations of okay, how do we introduce some elements of like. R&B, yeah. hip hop, like the maybe the Western uh, expression, yeah yeah, 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 it's a bit more familiar with. So that's how I started off with that. So I wrote, I wrote the hook, and then I kept it for two years because, like, for some reason, I had doubts about it. Because, <laughs> like, because it wasn't like this was not my regular go-to. Right. This isn't like uh, an easy waking up limo blaze sound. Sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I kept it for like two years and. And then I was like, I found Madison's music. She's a phenomenal. We got to have her on the show. It's so phenomenal. Madison, so you're amazing. I found her music and I'm like, who is this that has this voice? Yeah. The crazy story. And I went to search her out on Instagram and I saw that she was following me and I didn't, I wasn't following back. <laughs> I was like, oh no. How can somebody this amazing be following me? And I missed it. So I followed her back and I texted her and I was like, oh yeah. Oh my God, you sound so amazing. And then she was like, Yeah, I love I love your music too. And then yeah. and I had this song in 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 the drive for like two years. I was like, I gotta do something with her. Which goes against my regular principle. Because my regular principle <laughs> is I I have to have a relationship with someone like for a while before we make music. Right. But when I heard, I was like, no, nah, this just feels right. Mm. So I told her about it, sent a song to her, and she was like, Oh yeah, she loves it. And then she yeah. jumped. She jumped in it, man. And what I found with the with the song, like you said, it's like I feel like it reaches a broader audience. It's like there's so many people who are using the music, and I can tell these are not my regular folks in church. Yeah, it had it had a little bit more broad. Yeah, there are people who are 
discovered the song yeah. using the song yeah. who are not necessarily traditional Afro gospel yeah. fans. They just kind of yeah. like, I think that there's something beautiful about the message of it. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. What's, what's also interesting is to a very large extent, I think the message is very explicit. It, it, it is. Yeah. It is. It's like this is explicitly Christian content. I think it's just that... It's very, it's a very, first of all, it's not like yeah. a revolutionary concept. Oh, no, it's, it's not. just, yeah. this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad, and be glad. in it. It's like, we're going to make day. the best of this day. Yeah, regardless Even of it, what happens regardless. today, we're going to make it a pretty day. And, and it's, it's a very declarative statement. Yeah, this is gonna, it's gonna, it's yeah. going to be. Yeah. Not, it has been. It's, it's like, going to be. And I think that goes back to your, like, your, your way you think, the yeah, dependency. Yeah, yeah. Put it on God. Yes. It's going to be a good day. God's got yeah. this. And I think that's, that song gives me life. I think it gives blesses people for that reason. Yeah. All right, moving along. The year, the 2023 run, um, Pentagon God. I think it's my matter. Yeah, we did my, oh, oh, my oh, matter. Before we got to my matter, we did, well, we, I know we talked about Mwambe. That was another record. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah that but, was. But yeah, that was, I know we talked about that before, but let's talk about um, my matter. Like, yeah. That joint, bro. That's one of my <laughs> favorite songs from Limo Blaze, for sure. It's crazy, man. I think over time, I'm just learning to like, yeah, trust, trust the process, trust. Cause like I was, I was sharing with you yesterday <clears> when <throat> I wrote the song, I wasn't sure, man. <laughs> I wasn't sure, like, right. and I don't have, I personally don't have like a lot of unsure moments when it comes to songwriting, but like when I wrote the hook, cause I wrote the hook and for a long time, I kept, cause like I learned that from you. We would have a hook that I think, oh, this is amazing, but Ace is going to be like, let's try and see if we can beat it. <laughs> let's try and see if we can beat it. So we just keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. I kept going. I tried to, to write like four different hooks to it, but that particular one just kept saying, I'm not going anywhere. Ah. Uh, and then I just kept it. And then I brought Victor to my house, oh, Victor Thompson. He came it. to my house one day and he just went crazy. He just went crazy, and I was like, "Oh yeah, nah, this feels this feels." He, so right. he had a big moment this year, this. Past oh yeah, year. this. Year, I mean, no the, the, pun, pun intended. Pun intended. Like this is a, <laughs> yeah. a, a, in your year, you got somebody who had a super. Oh, run he, of it. he's had, yeah, he's had uh, such an amazing run. Like his year has been has been explosive. I think that's the right. Shout, word shout out to the Christians doing Afro beat music. Oh yeah. It's and like a whole thing happening. Yeah, that's 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 my bro, man. He's mm -hmm. like someone who is explicitly Christian. He is authentic in his beliefs and his faith. He's not he's not he's not a funny Christian. Like he's a real like he's like a he's like a real brother man. My sh my concert in London <laughs> he 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 I didn't know he was gonna be there. And then I was just walking backstage and I saw this dude there with his wife laughing at me. He came all the way, man. That was amazing. That's amazing. Shout out Victor, man. Love so, Victor. so, um, shout out Becca too. And shout out Becca. All she her verses. killed. Verse is amazing. She killed. And that, and that song is just, back, I'm hearing the same themes of like, yeah. for my matter, God's going to take care of my business. It's very, yeah. I think dependency is just. Yeah, because like, I just it's think. Just, that, that, I can't get away from that theme yeah, in I your think music, in, bro. In this, in, in this season especially, I just, I've just have been feeling that it's so important to turn people back to dependency on God and not dependency on things. Because mm. I've had experiences of people who fell out from their faith. Mm. And I promise you the problem wasn't Jesus. So, some, 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 some may be famous Afrobeat artists. I don't know. <laughs> but one thing that I've experienced is people sold them a false narrative of the gospel. So people, which, which is which is which is almost painting Jesus to be like a genie. You give him this, he's gonna give you that, and that's not the truth of the. So people have these expectations, and then they are not repeatedly and not met with those expectations, and they now begin to feel like God is not faithful. Yeah. That's and, so yeah, it's, but that's not what it is. Somebody just sold them the wrong gospel. I'm sorry to break it to you, yeah, but the truth and the entirety of the gospel is salvation. Every other thing, yeah, is a plus. That there's no there's no promise on that. The promise is you have been given life eternal, and as a believer, you should find the utmost joy and satisfaction in just having Jesus. Jesus, and it's not Jesus and, you should have the satisfaction in having Jesus, period. 
Mm. And I need believers to start having mm. that mindset because that way people do not start falling into this trap of, oh, because I didn't get provisions for this. Now I'm, God is not faithful. Mm. No, he's faithful, man. He died on the cross. That's faithfulness. Mm. He assured your, your eternity. That is the beginning and the end of faithfulness. That's it. That's it. Done. I mean, even to kind of speed through, man, like, I mean, talk and do went up, which I, I would oh, love yeah. to talk about that, but I want to talk and do, and then you have this song, um, which, uh, you know, over, I, I've been seeing you oh, yeah, teasing yeah, out on yeah, socials yeah. with Ellie. <laughs> That's going to be a moment. Yeah. It, it, may, it may be, it may be live by the time this drops, but speaking of like encouraging believers, yeah. I was in London, me, shout out Katie, shout out D, yeah. shout out Ben Washer, the Reach Records team, we're live in London for your Sunday in London show. Amazing. Talk about how everything you're preaching culminated in one night and, 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 and how that yeah. how that experience kind of fortified what you what you're branding and what you're yeah. what you're kind of talking through in your music. Yeah. I mean, so it falls back to like Afro Gospel, right? Most times when I say Afro Gospel, pe people think it's a sound. And I'm like, maybe for some artists it is. It's never been about the sound for me. I mean, the sound is a key part of it, but for me, Afro gospel has been a movement. Mm. It's been a movement of revival. It's been a movement of young people being unashamed mm. of their faith and their belief in Jesus and finding a sound that it could make the soundtrack of their lives. It's hard. So Afro gospel for me has been the soundtrack of, of, of the lives of a movement of young people who have come out to say, I love Jesus, I believe in Jesus, and I'll be unashamed about my faith. Mm. So when you come to my shows, it's crazy. Because, like, you see all of these young people who are, like, out there singing every song word for word. And we're in a season where these young people are so confident and proud to say, I listen to Afro Gospel. So I listen to, to Limo Blaze. Because, like, I mean, the music is amazing. That's a given. It's Afro beats. It's proper Afro beats. It's amazing, but it's not empty. It's like, it's got a message. It's got mm. a heart, a heart to it. Like you could tell there's a heart to the music. It's beyond just, oh, I want to make music for a bop. I want to make music for, not. Nah, you can feel the heart in sure. the music. And when you come to the shows, you can see that the people who are there are there not just for the music, but for what the heart of the movement is. That's so good. I mean, I think, you know, being there, I, I mean, I, obviously I can attest to everything you're saying because yeah. I was there live in London. Yeah. And I think it's just a testament of what you're building and, and what God's building through you, yeah. um, that you're being a conduit, man. So I, I just want to encourage you, man, like it's only up. Yes, it's, it's only up as long as you stay, keep your head tethered down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to the faith. And to the I like, I like that. You know what like, I'm saying? It's only up as, as, as you'll go as up as you yeah. can, as long as your head is down yeah. in, 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 in his foundation. That's very important, man. Um, and I just want to, even uh, obviously, you know, we, yeah, we, we do business, we, we do life, yeah, we make records, but yeah. this is real life, y'all. The one one six life. This is not That's real life. The Reno, Limo, I mean, this is not just something. This is not just entertainment. This yeah. Is, Hopefully, God prayerfully yeah. transformational content music that oh, yeah. can 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 raise the banner uh, and, and and carry the faith forward. So that, I, mean, I think I think I want to like we got to do a part two, a yeah. part three. Really, <laughs> yeah. uh, anything else you want to say, man? Before we before we tap out. Ah, uh, but yeah, man. Uh, just to add, this the testimonies uh, that has been the testimonies to what we've been doing is crazy, man. We see. We've been seeing lives transformed. I mean, even at the London show, we just we saw someone who had like like so many cuts on her body, mm -hmm. and she was like, "Oh, yeah, the music saved my life." And mm -hmm. I'm like, mm -hmm. "Yeah, God saved your life using this music." And I've just learned over time, and it's an encouragement to every uh, artist who is a believer out there. You just gotta make yourself available, man. Make yourself available. Make sure. Like A said, like you're keeping your head to the ground and your knees to the floor mm. to, and make sure you're sticking to the basics of what is the foundation of what you believe. Uh, KB mm. would say be more Christian than artist. Shout out KB, man. I love KB. Shout out KB. But yeah, it's the 116 life, man. This is real life. This is, it's not just music. We're not, we're not just acting out. This is our real man, life. That's what sure. we do. Well, we'll, we'll see y'all next time. Sirius Channel 140, Holy Culture Radio, 116 life.